Today, we're going to talk about algorithms. It's a step-by-step -step process that turns uh, complex procedures into yes and no steps. Utilizing algorithms, students or staff save time and remember a complex situation. Right. Today, we're going to discuss the use of algorithms. Algorithms are very important in the delivery of care for patients because it can take a complex procedure and it just turns it into yes and no steps. So students, staff, if they're trying to remember a complex procedure, they can just look at the algorithm and it takes them step by step. If this happens, yes, then do this. If it happens, if it doesn't happen, then you, you don't have to proceed. You know, there was a study that um, was undertaken on the transition of care in the emergency department. And they had lots of mnemonics to talk about the transition of care, but they developed an algorithm so that everyone knew how to execute that transition of care. And so that's why algorithms are very, very important. It makes life, you know, in critical situations, especially in the emergency room, when things are happening so quickly, it just makes things so much easier if you have an algorithm to follow because it takes some of the thought process out and you can just follow step by step. So what we're going to talk about today are right side of the EKGs. That's not something that we do very often in the emergency room, but it's very, very important. And so we're going to talk about um, algorithms for right side of EKGs. So really, what we want to talk about is the when and how to do a right side of EKG. So first, we're going to talk about the when, and we're going to develop an algorithm here, and then step-by-step -step process, and then we'll quickly talk about the how. So you have that patient that presents with chest pain. And so you do an EKG. Does the EKG have ST elevation? And that's going to be a yes or, or no. If it's yes, is there elevation? in the inferior leads. And when you look at the EKG, that's going to be lead 2, lead 3, and lead AVF. So if you have elevation in those leads, then you're going to need to do a right-sided EKG to see if there's right ventricular infarct. Um, if you don't have elevation in your inferior leads, then you're just going to follow along with your ST elevation protocols for an anterior, lateral, or whatever type of uh, ST elevation. But anytime that you have someone that has an inferior wall ST elevation MI, the American Heart Association recommends doing a right side of EKG. And so we'll talk about that. And that, a lot of, a lot of ER staff know that when they see an inferior wall elevation, to go ahead and do that right side of EKG. The thing that is not necessarily known though is you have that patient presents with chest pain, you do the EKG, and there's no ST uh, elevation MI. So how are you going to treat this patient? Well, we're going to treat them with aspirin, of course, if there's no allergies, and we're going to give the patient nitroglycerin. You give this patient nitroglycerin and their blood pressure, which when they presented, was normal. And if you've been an ER nurse for any amount of time, you've given that patient nitroglycerin, and all of a sudden their blood pressure just takes a huge dive bomb. All right? So now their blood pressure has gone from normal. Now they're hypotensive. They're diaphoretic. They don't feel well. They've had a sudden onset of nausea. Plus, they're having chest pain. Um, very, very small percentage, about 3% of all heart attacks, are isolated right ventricular infarcts. But you can have... I had a clue for right, right ventricular infarct is that sudden drop in blood pressure. So anytime you have a patient that has that sudden drop in blood pressure, you should do a right-sided EKG. And that is the thing that a lot of folks don't realize, that when you have that big drop in the blood pressure, that's when you want to do a right-sided EKG. So how would look something like this. You know, and we have this typed up in our emergency department. It's um, 
in several of our rooms, and we go over this in part of our annual competency so that um, the HAD is complete, there's no ST elevation in my, we give aspirin, nitro, um, uh, is administered, there's a sudden drop in the blood pressure, and with that, um, we want to consider doing a right side of EKG to rule out a right ventricular infarct. So, how do we go about doing a right sided EKG? Well, here is a normal EKG. So, you have your V leads, like this was on me. You have V1, V2, V3, V4, V5, V6, and then you have your extremity leads, and you do your normal EKG. Now, uh, some schools of thought say that the only one that needs to be moved over to the right side is V4. Because uh, V4 is the lead that provides you information on um, your right ventricular uh, infarct. Now, you've got this patient. They've had a sudden drop in blood pressure. They're diaphoretic. They look like crap. And you're thinking, oh, was it V4, V5? I can't remember which one, to, which one I'm supposed to move. So I think the easiest way to remember how to do a right side EKG is just, just to take your V lead. Now V1 and V2 can stay the same. You don't have to move V1 and V2. But you take V3, V4, V5, V6, you move them to the right side, do your KG just like you would normally, and just make sure that you write on it that it's a right side EKG. And that is it. That is all there is to doing a right side EKG. So just to review, um, your patient comes in, they're having chest pain. Your first step is to do that EKG. Uh, EKG shows ST elevation. Is it in your inferior leads? If yes, then you want to do a right side of EKG. You've already got them hooked up, so all you need to do is take V3 through V6 and move them to the right side. Really, on the right side of EKG, the cardiologist is going to be looking at what you see in V4, but this is the easiest way to remember the other is when you have that patient that comes in with chest pain, that EKG looks okay. You give them nitroglycerin as part of your cardiac workup uh, to help alleviate their chest pain and their blood pressure tanks. That is another time. I learned this by having that very patient that was having a right, uh, isolated right ventricular infarct, and my ER physician is the one that said, oh, you should do a right side EKG. Never done one before. He walked me through how to do that. But I remembered that ever since. And I pass this along um, to a lot of my co-workers um, and this is how myself and the educator developed an algorithm for doing right side EKG. So um, I hope this helps. I hope that um, you can understand the when and the how of when a right side EKG would be indicated. Thank you.